check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Oh, hi. Hello. How are you? Oh, good. Thank you. Highly uncircumcised. Michael Moore said he had a topic, so I'm going to be quiet until he says what it is. You don't keep looking at me. You said you had a topic. I'm going to need you to up your intro game. When I say something like highly uncircumcised, just come back with like, you know, Mike Moore in the house, Nicole Jergens in the house. So remember how I felt about you on the last episode? <laughs> you, he, you fell in love. I, I've turned all that around now and I'm <laughs> back to thinking you're a ridiculous human being. Okay. That was fun I, though. It was fun for I a half hour. I am both. I am both. I am I am the greatest and I am the most ridiculous. All in one. And that is the beauty of life. Hence the bow on your head. Okay. So check this out. It is not often, but it has occurred, uh, you know, every now and again in this little relationship of ours where you have actually changed my mind on something. And I, and I, I think I, it's more often than we say um, for both of us that, and I think that's why this relationship is a beautiful thing is that we can have really tough conversations and be com thinking completely the opposite. And we can get each other to be like, oh, okay. The fact that you can get me to be like, oh, okay, is something for people who know me this is something <laughs> yeah I, 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 just you saying that just made my entire rest of my day uh so this has occurred uh recently and i and i kind of debated whether i was gonna even like bring this up on, on stream or not but i, I think this is uh i think it's just interesting and, and we'll try and keep it highly uncircumcised yet not too <laughs> controversial a little bit circumcised a little a little just, bit <laughs> you just you just, just like, like leave this. just like <laughs> just a little cut leave, just a, yeah, little, a cut. little bit okay <laughs> so as you know i am a fully vaccinated uh antibody filled uh mammal uh as it pertains to covid uh i thought it was a a I thought it was my social responsibility. I thought it's my just individual physical health responsibility uh, to to go ahead and get that done when I was when I was able to get it done. Uh, as you know, my wife is a is a nurse and she's a frontline worker, so she actually got the uh, the vaccine like like the day after they came out. Their their job forced them to do it. They didn't even have a choice. Um, so anyway, it was sort of the mantra. And my mom at the time was living with us, as you know, and she's uh, almost 75 years old. So she thought it was a big deal to, to get it. Um, and just a little backstory on me. Um, I actually got COVID, which we talked about humorously on the show once or twice. Uh, so I've had I, COVID. I think we talked about it in the vision board and toxic positivity. Episode. Was it? If anybody uh, wants to go back and look, that's like episode four and five we, or something. We talked about how stupid I am for how I got it. But anyway, uh, so I got it and I was definitely not um, an asymptomatic person, but I also was not, you know, hospitalized or anything like that. I definitely suffered the, the, the symptoms of it uh, and so forth. Uh, and I don't know. Huh. So I often thought to myself, because through reading, uh, I started actually reading a lot about COVID and, and all of that stuff after I got it, of course, um, just to find out what the prolonged sort of effects might be on me and uh, what, what this could cause long term and so forth. And thankfully, I haven't had any sort of, of, the, of the long hauler uh, symptoms. Um, and so anyway, I say all that to say, I, I got vaccinated thinking I was doing the right thing. And then fast forward, I got vaccinated, I don't know, maybe a month, fully vaccinated. I've probably been fully vaccinated now for two months, let's say right around two months. Uh, but you and I got into our little thing last week uh, off stream, so they don't have the benefit of seeing us yelling at each other. but. Uh, we got into this COVID discussion and 
vaccine discussion and I was basically telling you, hey, get vaccinated. And you were telling me, well, yeah, I, I, you know, why and, you know, so forth and so on. Plus benefit analysis is what I said. Yes, exactly. And uh, anyway, the summation of everything was you sent me um, a a link to a podcast and I don't remember the the guy's name. Do you remember the, the name? Yeah. And I'll tell him if, in case anybody wants to listen, because, and actually this guy's podcast, his name is Sean Stevenson. Um, he goes by at Sean model on Instagram, but it's one of the only, if I'm on Instagram, it's one of the only accounts where I literally watch like every one of his videos, um, or I'll read every one of his captions. He has long ones. And, um, I really, enjoy his common sense approach to things. Also, I really enjoy he will take actual science. So, you know, everyone's like, follow the science, follow the science. actual science, peer reviewed science, science directly from the CDC and who, and he will dissect it and actually explain it because, you know, as lay people, we don't have those skills, right? We're not researchers. We're not scientists. We're not. So we are taking, and this is why, you know, again, I have problems with the news. We are taking what the news says, and it may not always be the whole story. It may not even be the right story but we don't have any other story. But anyway, so why I really like this guy and I suggest everyone follow him is, is I really like just his common sense approach to, he has two books about health and sleeping and his common sense approach to the actual real science. Like if you want to talk science, the actual real science and his most recent podcast, he also has a podcast is with um, a guest, Dr. Ron Brown, who's Harvard educated. And he's, he's a researcher. He's an officially a researcher. He's officially a scientist and he officially understands this information and it's it's really enlightening conversation so yes it, it was um so this actually goes back to our last podcast when we were talking about uh the loki uh you know do we do we uh, need to be uh ruled do humans have a need to be ruled um it makes me think about my approach to to covid and my thought process on covid because what i realized in listening to the the podcast that you shared was almost all the information that i've read uh watched um listened to from other people that i respect is information that comes from essentially one or two sources like the CDC, the World Health Organization, uh, Dr. Fauci, um, and haven't, and, and really, I think probably kind of uh, prejudged some of the people out there. I mean, some of the people just come off kind of like quackish and just sort of ridiculous that I've seen. But uh, the reason why I'm saying that is because listening to the guy in the podcast you sent he seemed so very knowledgeable, but sometimes when people are very knowledgeable on something, they can they can express their knowledge in such a way that's just really off-putting and it just it's either over your head or it doesn't even sound like it can make sense just because it's just so ridiculous. But they sort of laid out uh, the case for why um, it may not be necessary to get vaccinated. So the thing I loved was they didn't just hit you with we're anti-vaxxers and don't get vaccinated and it's a government conspiracy to just rule over everybody and so forth and all can that I, kind Can of I stuff. say something to that without can you hold on to your thought sure. because I want you to finish but I, I want to say something about that because that's again the divisive nature of of the media is that immediately once something somebody asks a question about the safety of a vaccine or, or any drug or or ask a question about, you know, the mainstream narrative, they're immediately labeled as anti or, you know, it's like, it's like saying that, you know, pro-choice people are anti-life. And it's just not right. true. I, there are probably right. a contingency, a small percentage who are, who are incredibly anti-vax, probably. But I would just guess, and this is not based on any scientific research, so don't at me. This is just my belief. I would guess that over 90% of the people who are questioning are simply pro safety or simply verifying, which is what I want to do, the cost benefit analysis. Is what I'm putting into my body more uh, more necessary than the risk of possibly getting this disease, right? Right. And, and I told you this before, like if 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 COVID was what we reacted to it as, like we treated it like it was 
in that movie Contagion from with Dustin Hoffman in the 90s. We treated it like it was this disease that like hits you and dead. And if it was that, if it really was that, I would have been first in line for the vaccine. I would have been like, women and children out of the way, like out of the way, give me the shot. You know, like, you know, like, <laughs> so I just, the whole point I want to say is I'm not anti vaccination. I'm actually pro science. But the funny thing is a narrative will make you look like you're the kook, you're the anti vaccine, you're against the science, which is so funny. But please carry on. Are you a science fan? I can't remember. I haven't seen it in so long, but so I don't really remember. But do you remember the episode when the apartment caught fire? And George was at a birthday party and he knocked no. over like old women and children to get out of the house. <laughs> it was literally like a six-year-old's birthday party, and he's knocking everybody over to get out of the, the door because of the fire. That would be me. That crazy. would be me. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, what I was saying was like the way that they approached um, the discussion was so civil and intelligent you really just had to listen right because when you sent it to me I was like man this is two hours long there's no way in the world I can sit through this nonsense it's going to be a bunch of medical data that I don't give a damn about and I'm already vaccinated anyway the way they broke it down was so easy to understand um, on an intellectual level just talking about nutrition and what vitamins do this and what vitamins do that and 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 all the the what is, what is it called like pre comorbidity uh issues that people had that that were were dying uh because they got COVID and so forth um and when when they break it down and I thought about it I was just like maybe I jumped the gun getting the vaccine now I don't really like lament it it's not something that I'm like oh my god I wish they could extract it out of my body I'm not really thinking that but I am just like when you consider the fact that they've now told people uh like yesterday the day before or whenever it was like you know we're getting away from mask and all that but something like I think it's like 60% of Americans still haven't gotten vaccinated it makes you think to yourself like Who's in control of the narrative here? Because if you really cared about everybody being vaccinated, why are we now, why is now the time to go ahead and take off masks and start living life normally? Now, I personally am all for it. I wish that they would just, just put a thing out in California because California is super rigid on this. Like you no longer need masks. You no longer need to social distance. You know, we're just, we're going for it as a society. But I don't understand how that thought process parallels everything that has gone on for the last year. And I think it's funny because again, you sending me, well, us first having the argument and then you sending me the information really just had me stop and think like, wow, there seems to be a few agendas at play here and none of them really seem to be the health of society. Uh, I think that's 100% it. And, and, and we started this conversation with a vaccine debate, which really is the end of a conversation. It, it really goes back to the beginning of, of entirety of COVID, how it was treated, how we reacted to it, our, our whole reaction to COVID in the first place. So it really is not even about the vaccine. It, it's it's about the idea of, you know, like what even is COVID and, and the idea that we have of it. And, and, and when we went to everything about like how actual doctors, lawyers, scientists, physicians, frontline workers, EMTs are, are getting censored for, for explaining their view of what they have seen. And if it's a different narrative, they're getting censored. And we went into a long conversation about this because that really, really bothers me. Getting censorship at all really, really bothers me because once you start that, it's a slippery slope, I think, but we can get into that a different time. But I wanted to address what you said, because again, this is another post from at Sean Model on on Instagram and he talks about how we got here. And he said, I, I wanna read this like really quick. He said, Dr. Paul Weaver, former professor of political science at Harvard University stated, the news media and the government are entwined in a vicious circle of mutual manipulation, myth-making and self-interest. Journalists need crises to dramatize news and government officials need to appear to be responding to crises. So again, he's, he's quoting 
a former professor of a political science at Harvard University. He didn't make this up. People are going to get their undies in a bunch by hearing this. But that, in essence, is how we got here, right? Again, this isn't like, go watch that movie. Go watch Contagion. It's a great movie. Actually, Dustin the movie Hoffman. You're referring to, the movie you're referring to is called Outbreak. Oh yeah! Contagion, oh darn it! You're Contagion right. Was, was was with uh was with um the yeah. born identity. What's his name? Uh, Rounders. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. It's called Outbreak. Shoot, I got that wrong. Um, go watch that movie, right? And you'll see what I mean about you know our response to this COVID has been basically the response. Like I can't. And and the reason <laughs> why you can just say well, okay, whatever, it's over. We're moving on. But the 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 worry is is it and this is what this researcher brought up also in the podcast is that if this was our response like is it ever really over i mean you know there's going to be you know the flu and colds come up seasonally when it comes up again what's going to happen like that's why we have to have these discussions we have to be able to ask these questions you can't be labeled anti-vaxxer because you're simply asking the questions this is yeah, what science just... is the, the, the <clears throat> constant experimentation experimentation and questioning and you know right figuring out if what we are doing is right so if you just look at everything from a strictly logic perspective, right? Ever since the pandemic started and the governments went crazy on shutdowns and you know the economy went into hell and you know people were protesting in state capitals and all this kind of stuff, there was a huge swath of people that said, we are not wearing masks. We don't care what you say, which I guess flies in the face of my 95% cheap model. But uh, anyway, there was a large contingent of people that said they're not wearing masks. Okay, now fast forward to today when we've got 130 million people vaccinated and the numbers are all going in the right direction and people are not dying at the same rates and so forth and so on. And they're saying, hey, take off your mask now, unless you're in Walmart or Costco or Starbucks, then unless this and unless that. Unless you actually want to travel somewhere, then no. Exactly. But, but so the point I'm getting to is they're telling people it's okay to take off your mask if you are fully vaccinated, okay? Well, makes sense, right? You're fully vaccinated. You're not likely to be spreading around COVID. But have they not considered the percentage of people that said F you were not wearing masks anyway? So like this whole uh, uh, honor system thing is so dumb because so why would somebody who said in March of 2020, I'm not wearing a mask and still people are dying at this huge rate. Why is that person now in May of 2021 going to say, no, I'm not vaccinated, but I choose not to wear a mask. No, they're just going to be like, yeah, I was vaccinated. And I'm not wearing a mask. It's, but, there's just no again, logic behind how I think, they're doing this. I think you're pointing out the ill, yeah, the, the illogic behind the entire treatment of this whole thing. Because again, I mean, the government is made up of people. It's made up of us. Everybody was scared. Everybody didn't know what to do. We were worried it was going to be outbreak, right? We and But when it turned out to not be, we just got caught in this vicious cycle and people are going to still be mad at me i lost my mom and dad and i know people who lost their mom and dad i do oh i do too 100 several 100 percent. i know that yeah. and yeah it fucking hurts when somebody dies that you know yes it does but this was an outbreak it just wasn't and you have to listen to this to this podcast first or or you know stop it now and go and listen because then the other thing is what you're saying, how it's illogic, how they're like, oh yeah, just go ahead, go out. What you'll find out from this researcher in this podcast is that the actual efficacy, the absolute efficacy, not the relative efficacy of these vaccinations, for one of them, the Moderna is, is 0 0.07 and the Pfizer is 1.1%, something like that, right? Or maybe I have them backwards. Literally like 1%. But the so, way they broke those, yeah, but they but they the way they broke those numbers down, there's like a mathematical formula for how uh, critical the, the disease really is. And when they broke it down and then I kind of looked it up, I was just like, oh, <laughs> like we might have uh, well, <laughs> we might have a little excited here. Not only that is just when you really look at re which I really love about this guy and he gets super passionate because he's just like what the hell is going on here, you know? The whole world is is believing something but it's not. You got to look at the data and this is a guy that looks at data and he, and and they did a really good job of making it understandable for a common human being like myself. But he even talks about the way you look at clinical versus overall data and people are like well this is right. the flu like the flu is yeah but the difference is 
is that the way you look at the flu is after two years, you compare the rate of death and, and um, what's it called when you get the flu? Um, infection. infection versus yeah. an entire population. Right. Whereas before two years, you look at just the rate of infection and death versus the ones infected. So that's why COVID, COVID is only versus the infected, not an entire population. At the end of the day, what he says, and this might get us censored for me saying this, is that this could likely be less harmful than the flu. And please don't shut down our video, and they might, the but that should be expressed worried. on this <laughs> podcast are that of Nicole Jurgens, an individual. Please I am not, and, and listen, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a researcher. I'm not, and if it bothers you that I have my own views and maybe you need to look at yourself. And, and that, you really need to listen to the Loki podcast because that would really help you out. The episode we just one. did, yeah, yeah. That, that would really help you out. But uh, so you this is the stuff that, that, so here's the other problem that, that I have and why I've kept my mouth shut all year and why I'm just like, oh God, I'm just going to hide in my house because none of, nothing makes sense to me out in the world. And we talked about in Loki, like, how do you know what's right? And, and I say, I just know it in my heart, like, you know, and, and that's how I felt the minute this pandemic hit is that, you know, we were playing poker in the casino and people would come literally. in in February, <laughs> like literally Fe February, 2020. And they'd come in with masks on and they would say, Nicole, aren't you scared? Like pandemic hit. And I was like, no, I just literally in my heart. There's this knowing, and this part's going to get me blasted for sure, but that's how I can't explain it to you as a researcher. And, and so that's why I never said anything all this time, because I'm not a researcher. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a... I just know how but you are intuitive a player. I am. <laughs> and that equals all of that. <laughs> You're right. You are right. That is something um, that none of this added up. None of it did. And I'm really happy that now there are finally people coming out. Even this researcher said, he's like, I never said anything all along because what would anyone do? No one would care. No one would care. They don't. No one so, wants to care. You know what you, you will probably find interesting is that <laughs> what you will find interesting that I really got out of that uh, episode, that podcast was like nutrition and how America really sees its population and what we what they because it's not we not me what they will push on the population um and then medicate us right mm -hmm. so we don't mind like billion dollar food processing companies that that give us like processed foods and all this kind of stuff right or we you know we'll, we'll still sell yeah. cigarettes Sub we'll say subsidies, you can't ever... subsidies yeah, we'll... for for stuff that kills us yes exactly we'll, we'll billions tell... We'll tell cigarette companies you can't advertise anymore on television, magazines, anywhere else, right? Because obviously they feel it's so bad, you can't even advertise this product. But you will still s allow this product to be sold, right? Um, we don't talk about because of probably, you know, cancel culture and-, and, and We know, have one people, of those episodes too. Yeah, exactly. How people will feel, right? We don't talk about the fact that almost 50% of are this obese. country are clinically obese. And these are things that I got out of, uh, <clears throat> out of this particular episode. So this particular episode had such a profound, I'll just talk about me. It had such a profound effect on me that even though you, you know this, like I try and eat as healthy as I can. And, you know, I've always been kind of big into working out and losing weight and just being healthy. That was always kind of our thing. We actually tried to encourage people we knew at the poker table, like, you know, you, me and a good friend, we did a weight loss challenge and, you know, all of that good stuff. Um, I put on like somewhere between five and 10 pounds during the pandemic. I literally went to my wife after I watched this episode and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm literally going to take off 30 pounds right now because my goal was 20 pounds more before the pandemic started. And then I added five or 10 pounds. So I'm like 30. I'm like, you know what? We have to really start having a discussion about overall health because in my opinion, and, and like you said, this is probably going to get us banished or whatever, but this is, this is Mike's controversial opinion. Uh, I don't think COVID would have hit this country as hard as it did if we had a population that actually was was healthy or more more healthy and when i say healthy don't at me uh 
you know, because I'm not talking about people who have pre-existing conditions that literally they have no control over, okay? I'm not talking That's about- That's not most of them. And I'm not even talking about diabetes, even though I know diabetes is like a sedentary disease, right? If you already have it, then, you know, the only way to cure it is to, is to get healthy and you can cure type two diabetes. Type one is just something you're born with. Type two is something that you get overweight, you're not working out. And, and I have a lot of experience with this. My dad died from complications due to, to, due to diabetes. I've had diabetics in my family. I have diabetics in my family, I should say. Um, I've struggled with high blood sugar. So um, I'm, I'm talking to, 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 to the population that actually can control those pre-existing conditions. Like we as a society, we have to decide like we want to get healthier or maybe just healthy, maybe healthier is the wrong word. That should be the narrative the whole last year. Nutrition. But, and it's funny though, not funny. There are actually people who, when trying to say literally that, just that we need to be healthier. That's the number one reads or the number one aiding factor. And, you know, in number one, COVID not affecting you as much. And number two, healing from it, if you have it, right? Right. Um, people are literally censored or video shut down simply for saying that. And, and so again, it's just the entire treatment of, of this disease or virus and has been confounding to me. And, and also I felt like, Oh, I guess it's just me. I guess I have it wrong, but you can see when you really do look and before they get censored or taken down, there's a lot of people out there that, that feel the same way. And these people were probably something I like, I was never anti-masker, but also I never go anywhere ever. Like I, when I go outside, I don't, I, I only wear the mask where I have to, I'm not going to yell about it. Like whatever, if you want me to wear a mask in your store, I'll wear it. But I think it's just, it's basically a way of protest to be like, this doesn't even make sense. And, and you but can to point me, to again, scientific thing. Like actually, again, Sean model has a great post again on Instagram. There's 12 different peer reviewed studies of the efficacy of masks against infection. And they're all like, it's negligible. It's not even so again, like science. So, so, uh, and, 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 and again, Huh. My contention is not that I don't even have to get into the whole political side of it and mask, anti-mask, vaccine, anti-vaccine. That, that's sort of not where I'm coming from right now. Where I'm com coming from is simply, A, listeners, all 40 of you, do your own, do your own research, yes. right? Just read. Reading never hurt anybody. Um, read. Turn and really off the news. You know, I like 65% of me is with you on that. I haven't completely cured myself of the, the news bug. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I still, you know, I still watch a fair share of news, but I have, you know, that has subsided somewhat. I'm doing something. But all I want to say is like, start considering all the factors when making a decision, like whether or not you're going to vac vaccinate yourself or your your family um when when I kind of went over in my mind like all the reasons why I decided I was going to get vaccinated I realized that almost at the very top of my list was I want to travel again mm -hmm. and as you and I both know I I love to travel me and my wife love to travel we love to get out and I was like there's no way I can sit on the sidelines uh just because I you know haven't been vaccinated I gotta just go ahead and suck it up and get it done and I don't even know if that was really a the best you know sort of so uh, formulation to, to to get it done I, I again so when when mike and i had this conversation before that's what i was talking to him about is like you know how many freedoms do we allow to be taken and where and he was saying well, what if you get vaccinated or don't you don't have to get vaccinated no one's going to force you but you know if you want to go somewhere you gotta get back and i said well it's just it's it's a, is that what we've decided as a society? And, and basically what he did in our conversation is he's saying, you know, in this society, we have this book and it's not, you know, we have these things that we have to do for the safety of our society. And he convinced me, he said, you know what, you're right. You know, if this is a society I live in and this is what we decide we need, then I will do it. I will go and get vaccinated. And, and so we can all live comfortably and happily and everyone feels safe. And, and he convinced me actually. 
I haven't done it yet, nor do I feel like I need to yet. But he, for the first time, I said, you know what, you're right. He also made me just, it, when the way he said it, it made me think like, yeah, you know, when you live in a city with people, I think about my dogs, of course, because I always think about my dogs. But, and I think about like, so I have a, a male and a female dog. And I think, you know, if I lived out in the country in the middle of nowhere, I would have never got them spayed or neutered, right? You leave them intact, leave them, it's better for their health. It's, you know, that can be another debate, but apparently it is. And, um, but when you live in a city, there's things that you need to do, right? There's dogs everywhere. It's just better and safer. And then you don't have all these stray dogs, millions upon millions getting killed in shelters. So you do it, right? It's, you know, you you live within the confines of, of the rules and regulations of, of where you're living. And the way you said it, it was much more eloquent than that, but it made me think of that. I was like, yeah, okay, you're right. You know, the only problem I have is I just want to make sure before we make that decision that that's what we need to feel safe, that we have 100% thought about it. And also think about the future ramifications. Because again, if, if we have this reaction to this specific virus, which in the end, if you look at the science to understand how, I don't want to say non detrimental but the science, how we reacted was overblown to this. It worries me for what's next. And that's what I, that's where within me, that's what I look at. So again, I, I will get vaccinated if that's what we feel as a country, as we, but I also really want all of us to really ensure we know what we're doing. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, I think that's all that I have on that. But um, I just wanted you to know, like, I really, listen to that to that podcast and I and I really digested it and you know um again I I'm sure I I changed my mind on just how I approach the vaccine and again for the listeners I am in no way shape or form anti-vaccine and if you got the vaccine I I applaud you I got the vaccine my wife got the vaccine uh, my mom got the vaccine uh, my brothers have gotten it um aunts and uncles so so the people in my, you know, inner circle, my family have, have, have been vaccinated. My children have not gotten it. And um, I don't think that I will have them get it um, unless data points me otherwise. But um, I think what I really will just want to convey in this particular episode is like, you know, use your own critical thought when making decisions. Because one thing that Nicole has always espoused to me and and it has been a just a seven-year mantra is the the news is designed to scare you and it's only been recently that I've looked at the news it's from not that designed person. to scare you it is a profit it is a for-profit company it's a profit machine it's, where they where they find fear useful is, yes is it's, a better it's, way to put it we we feel uh, as a society that I think we we've come to feel that the news is a source of education it's not it is not. they are companies products. that are yeah selling stories in order to make money and right. so and fear really sells and this goes along right. with you can again you can watch our last episode about loki and freedom and we want to feel safe and so that's why fear sells and so i mean this is getting off on another subject but yeah, it's if if that is your only source of information, no matter what they're saying, no matter if they're quoting the CDC, again, you can find people who actually like like this guy, and I'll I'll post um, a link to that episode in our notes. But who who dissect the entire information? They don't take talking points out and blast it like the news does. They actually dissect the entirety of of the information and to really explain the science. And, and the news doesn't do that. The news takes what they think is going to sell and then they'll sell it to you. And, and, and fear sells. It sells like hotcakes. And when was the just, last time you bought a hotcake? Eat it up. <laughs> eat that up. That's the last time you bought a hotcake. I don't even know what the hell a hotcake is. Exactly. You, you know what? You shooting breezes out there buying hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I hope they don't censor this. If they do, that should just be a further question in your mind, like, uh, uh, what is happening? Because for, for they, people to just they, literally <laughs> talk their beliefs to, to get shut down, which they have been for all year, then... If they censor this, we're going to change our name to H-U circumcised. So we're just going <laughs> to outsmart you two. Heads up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be called the Heads Up Podcast. It makes sense, poker. Whatever. That's cool. 
All right. Well, I didn't know we were going to talk about this. I wasn't prepared to talk about this. You Michael didn't know. sprung this on me before we started. It. I was I like, it better it. not be COVID. Mike, it better not be. Like, just start. Just, just start. start. And just we, start. we can erase it if we want to. But here you go. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>